Hello everyone! Did you ever think it was possible for humans to hibernate? Well, researchers in Japan have made one small step towards accomplishing this. And by watching this video, you will make one giant leap in your understanding. At Biochemistry Explained, we make scientific literature accessible. Hi, I am Liva, a researcher in the field of biochemistry and drug development. The topic we are going to discuss in this video is hibernation. A recently published paper in Nature showed that mice, which typically do not hibernate, can be put in a hibernation-like state by activating specific neurons. But first, it is important to understand why specific animals hibernate. I think it's safe to say that most of us think of bears when we think of hibernation, and especially this one. Animals hibernate to bypass a period of food scarcity, especially in winter. To reach the state of hibernation, animals drop their metabolism, called hypometabolism, and also drop their body temperature. This reduces the amount of energy needed to survive. This is usually accompanied by weaker brain activity, a slower heart rate, and weaker breathing. All of this allows the animal to stay healthy during hibernation. Mice do not hibernate, but exhibit a short hypometabolic state, called torpor. Torpor is similar to hibernation, but is much shorter, it is involuntary, the metabolic rate drops less, and it is controlled by the circadian rhythm, your daily cycle. Researchers from the University of Tsukuba and the Riken Center for Biosystem Dynamics Research showed that you can induce hibernation in mice. They identified a population of neurons in the hypothalamus that expressed a neuropeptide called QRFP. QRFP has been implicated in hypometabolism before and is explored further in this paper. These neurons were called Q neurons. And excitation of these Q neurons by a drug called clozapine and oxide led to hypothermia and hypometabolism. The researchers called this Q-neuron-induced state QIH. Several key observations were done that showed that QIH has a lot of similarities to hibernation. First of all, it lasted longer than 24 hours. As shown by infrared imaging, the body temperature dropped significantly after excitation of Q-neurons. In addition, oxygen consumption, which is seen as a measure of metabolic rate, also decreased. The second characteristic, also seen in hibernation, is the lowering of the reference body temperature, or TR. The increased temperature in the tail of the mice after CNO administration suggests peripheral vasodilation. This is a process where peripheral blood vessels are widened, which leads to higher blood flow and a decrease in body temperature. To further investigate this, the researchers measured oxygen consumption as well as body temperature at a variety of ambient temperatures. This allows them to see how the thermoregulation functions during QIH. They showed that when subjected to a variety of temperatures, the mice were still able to adapt even when they were in hibernation. For example, when the ambient temperature drops, you can see that the oxygen consumption increases, as seen in hibernation as well. In addition, their estimated TR in the mice stimulated with CNO was almost 10 degrees lower. The third important observation made in this study was that this hibernation-like state did not cause any tissue damage. This is despite the fact that they observed a very slow heart rate, low brain activity and also weaker breathing. Finally, it is very important to note that these mice were able to spontaneously recover without any external stimuli. Don't forget to hit the like button if you enjoy the video. What is even more spectacular is that the same researchers could induce QIH in rats, a species that does not exhibit any hibernation or torpor-like behavior. This is a big step forward in trying to understand hibernation and the processes involved. It also suggests that these processes, even though they might not be used, are conserved across mammals. Further research is required to understand this further, and especially the mechanisms involved. In this paper, an interesting role for snare proteins is mentioned. 
SNAP proteins mediate neurotransmission and appear to be important for the activation of Q-neurons. To conclude, the paper proved it is possible to induce a hibernation-like state called QIH in non-hibernating animals by excitation of Q-neurons. That this mechanism might be conserved across mammals allows us to think about inducing hibernation in humans. At first you might think, why would this be necessary? Well, it has unlimited advantages such as limiting damage after injury such as heart attack or stroke, but it can also help preserve donor organs or even help patients in a coma state. But the most fascinating application would be that it can help us go to Mars! The long journey to Mars is an immense burden on the human body. Putting the body in a hypothermal and hypometabolic state will help us conserve energy and also survive this very long journey of food scarcity. During my time as a student and as a researcher, I have come to the conclusion that scientific literature often does not reach a broad audience. However, we want to provide a way to do this by making short and informative videos about recent and novel findings in the field of biochemistry. I hope you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button and subscribe, and if you have any suggestions for future papers I should discuss, let me know in the comments below. Thank you for watching and see you next time!